Hello, this is your host of CivilNet, Eric Akopian, and we're honored to have, actually, we're honored to be at the house of our guest today. Uh, just to show that we're not fair weather interviewers, it's winter and we're outdoors and we're doing an interview with uh, Mayor Liu Papazian, who's the CEO of the Tumo Center. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Or thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for coming. Uh, I don't, uh, as we all know, you know, this, uh, our, our uh, country and our uh, people in general are in a state of crisis because of this uh, unfortunate and tragic war that we went through. Uh, and every institution uh, is, you know, trying to hold up its share of the sky, the share of the Armenian sky. Uh, what do you see as the two more role in this moment of crisis? First of all, in responding to what's going on. Uh, and in the bigger scheme of things, what is uh, the responsibility of your organization and what actions are you taking to deal with this, this crisis that we're in at this time? We did several things uh, during the war and we're continuing. And of course, we're continuing our mission, which is to bring top-notch education to the young generation and to continue that. And as you probably have seen, we have opened two TUMO boxes in the past week. Which what does that mean? Can you explain what TUMO boxes mean exactly? So it's, it's a small piece of TUMO okay. uh, in either a village or a city. Uh, and what allows is to give access to the teenagers from 12 to 18 to be part of the TUMO curriculum and educational process. And uh, by opening this first two, and we're opening a third one in Sevan, we're continuing that uh, path. Uh, and we have in mind at least 85 to 100 locations. Yes, it's a huge project. Uh, we're trying to make the cost uh, as low as possible. Uh, and by creating this around the hubs that we already have, like Gimri, like Gokh, like Dilijan, like Yerevan, and hopefully we'll have a hub around Gapan area. Uh, it's very important to create these satellites, satellites that are uh, very easily accessible to the uh, village people or cities, so they do, we don't transport them uh, to Yerevan, and to bring that program to every corner of Armenia and, of course, Artsakh. Excellent. Uh, you know, both of us are diasporans, so we're obviously in contact with uh, our friends, family, and uh, you see a lot of uh, despondency or, uh, uh, you know, what do we do? Uh, there's a lot of negativity, some of it obviously justified, some of it entirely irrational. Uh, <clears throat> From a perspective of a diasporan, uh, what advice do you have for people about what they should be doing? I'm talking about the people of goodwill that want to, you know, want to help, want to get involved. Uh, what is the task at hand, and uh, what is it that they should be focused on? And I also want to, you know, you know, bring this up. What is it that they should be wary of, of not being dragged into this, what I call the irrational side of the negativity? How would you? What advice would you have? I would advise everyone, and, and I really believe that everyone wants to help, uh, even if they're negative. Uh, I would advise them to be patient and to trust and to do everything possible to come. We need human resources. Even if it's, I'm not asking everyone to move to Armenia, but even if it's a certain period of the year, one month, two months, three weeks, doesn't matter, to be part of, of the everyday life here. When you are part of the everyday life, you will see things differently. And you will have more patience, you need more breath to continue, and you need probably a lot of energy uh, to make it happen. One thing that, uh you know, we have discussed in our other shows is the relevance of, uh, of excellence. Because one of the things that this uh, experience with the war has shown uh, is that uh, so many of our institutions, both here in the diaspora, are mediocrities at best. 
and what is critical for us, and we simply cannot afford that. What is critical for us is to have uh, centers of excellence, where if you're going to do something, even if it's small, make sure it is the best. And you guys, uh, obviously, you're one of these centers of excellence to the extent that I know other countries and other leaders come to you to go to their countries and establish yourself, which is an extraordinary compliment for an institution out of Armenia, given all of our problems. Uh, let's talk about that. Uh, why is mediocrity dangerous? And why should we, why should we be like, single-handedly focused on making sure that everything we do is better than average? Quality is very important, uh, and mediocrity is very dangerous because when you're mediocre, you allow mistakes. And when you are, you seek quality and excellence, the more you demand from yourself uh, to, to do things the best, the more you start seeing the reality and the mistakes or the problems and you solve them. Otherwise, you just hide everything and you comply with whatever is available and you never get to solve your problems. And solving the problems is not to be the best. Our intention is not to say we are the best and uh, we have the best kids, we're the most intelligent on earth, no. It's to create the life that we want here for every one of us, not only you and me. It's for our neighbors, for our society, for our kids to be proud of that. And actually yesterday when I was coming back from Bert, I was talking with my son and he said, why, why would you do what you're doing? It's not the responsibility. It's the fact that you feel that if you can make a difference for the next generation, you have to do it. And you have to do the best you can. Otherwise, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, the, that's the correct attitude uh, as far as looking at what needs to be done. Uh, I know that uh, you, you guys have many, many new projects, some of which I know you can speak of and some of which you can't because they're not finalized yet. Uh, can you uh, enlighten our audience about some of the ones that, that you want people to know about that are interesting and people should uh, be following? We have several, but the most important ones are one big one is the Conversion Center, which is the continuity of TUMO Center for higher education. Uh, uh, just, to be, under... just to be clear with that, your current program ends at 18. So this is focused on yes. post -time. 18 up, uh, 18 up, 25 or 30, to make sure that uh, the uh, that segment uh, have the opportunity to excel. Uh, and we're working with the grant that we have received from European Union to build a very interesting facility right next to Tumo, and we have already worked, uh, done the first all the drafts of the architectural project and we will start construction uh, early this year or hopefully this year. Um, the next project is a big project also. Uh, it's the market in um, Gumri is to convert the old market that was sold and then we bought it to bring it back to life as a market. Just the shuka like the... Yes, as a market. Uh, make it the house or home of the people there and build a um, um, culinary facility next to it uh, like a university for uh, color, a culinary school and a hospitality management school. The third big project is uh, our cultural heritage. Uh, from this war we learned uh, that we were not ready and we have not uh, prepared or collected the database of everything we have. And during the war, uh, we were able, Tuma was able to mobilize a team and we were able to capture uh, most of the 
cultural heritage sites of Agdam, uh, Kalbachar and Lachin. We did an amazing work. Is this available already online or is it? No, it's not available. We're preparing, we're processing it. Uh, but the, we want to continue and we want to do uh, the rest of Artsakh and of course uh, Armenia as, um, as a whole and have a platform that uh, will uh, give the opportunity to collect all the details that are missing. That's a big job that we have to do. And uh, finally, we have uh, the project, the TUMO Studios, which is the analog TUMO, is to uh, protect and work on our cultural heritage and to give the skills uh, to the young generation to appreciate and to create uh, everything that is related to our culture. This is crafts related, correct? Uh, I think there's a Danish model with this, right, where they use this whole crafts model in actually developing the economy. I think I don't know if you're based off of that. Uh, obviously, one of the primary missions of uh, of your organization is to impact the economy, uh, to sort of create the, the you know the, the infrastructure for the IT industry and for future leaders. Uh, you've been around for a significant amount of time now. You guys are not new. Uh, what specific things have you seen? What specific impacts has TUMO had on the, uh, on the Armenian economy as a whole and on the IT sector uh, in general? And in, if you have any specific examples, it'll be interesting for people to know. Several impacts. Uh, and uh, because of COVID, we were not able to, do, uh, to start our assessment, uh, long-term assessment, but we're hopefully next year we'll, we'll do it. But what we do, we prepare the dough. Uh, and the dough has to be good in order to get good results. If you prepare a good dough, you, you, will, you will have uh, what you expect. And it's not, it's not uh, so that we count how many jobs we have created, but we want to impact as much as we can, uh, big masses. So what we do is not selecting the best of our students and giving them education, but trying to impact and to push every one of them to do their best and to reach their maximum potential. You're actually more interested in the atmosphere that you create than on the exact specifics. No, not only that. It's to give everyone the foundation and to push them up. Uh, but some can go very high, some can go lower, some can go tangently, but impacting everyone together uh, and to their maximum and preparing that foundation that is very solid. So that's very important. And that starts from early age to learn how to learn, continue learning, to be self-sufficient, to make their own choices, to go very deep in what they're learning, to not be afraid, mm -hmm. to try new things, to have open mind, um, and to always continue learning. That's very important. So that's our mindset. I, you said a lot of interesting things, but I think the key, the key phrase is not to be afraid. That's, that's, that's the basis of almost any action that you take that actually has productive ends. Uh, I'm going to end with this final question. Uh, why are you optimistic? I'm, I'm an optimistic person in general, but I think when you love your country and we, when you love who you are, uh, an Armenian, I don't think you can stop being optimistic no matter what happens. Everyone can have difficulties in their lives, but you never give up. It's my family, it's my being, it's what I am. And I will never give up. I will always be optimistic and I will always have, they always tell me that I have a lot of energy. I, they sometimes tell me that I'm the Duracell battery <laughs> that continues when every battery stops. 
but because I love my country and I love who I am uh, as an Armenian, and because that gives me a lot of satisfaction, I cannot stop being optimistic. I think, uh, if I was to guess, part of your optimism comes with uh, working with young people here, which is yes. something that I do. And yes. you cannot, you cannot be pessimistic yeah. when you deal with the generation of uh, people that we have coming. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to thank you uh, for this opportunity to interview you, and thank you for all your insights. Thank you. Uh, this is your host of Civil Eric Kopian. Thank you for joining us.